there is a level of, of contradiction that we are forced to live with. Why are we forced to live with contradiction? Because we have no choice but to live. We must live. We must, we must embrace life and live every moment. And when there are problems in a person's life, when there are, where there are problems in the world, when we're suffering, struggling, so on the one hand, these, these are things that are paralyzing, crippling, and hard to, 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 to endure and to have a will to, to carry on, to, to continue on. But at the same time, life doesn't have a pause button and we have to continue to live on. So you have to deal with hardship, but at the same time you have to continue kind of take, you know, taking things in as much stride as we can and moving forward. But we always go through the ups and downs of the day-to-day -day life, good days, bad days, fights, making up, you know, that, that's part of life. But the contrast, the stark contrast between the beginning of a month of Adar with Rosh Chodesh and the idea of being besimcha, being full of happiness and joy, uh, you know, the beautiful sun shining, the, the spring, spring air, it's, it's so rejuvenating, so inspiring that we have a beautiful future ahead of us and we have to be besimcha and the month of Adar is a month where we emphasize you know mar ben besimcha you have to be happy and Adar it's, it's, it's the theme of the whole month yet amongst the difficulties that we're going through right now terrorist attacks you know the, the sinat chinam the, which is hatred for, between human beings all around the world and the anti-Semitism the hatred towards Jews the, the, the unbelievable things that, that we have to deal with in every country we are you know, insults, violent attacks, murder. Here in our own homeland, we are, it's as if we're the weak minority on sometimes, it's how it feels. You know, the threat of being attacked all the time, everywhere you walk. When I walk down the street sometimes, you know, you're thinking about what if there's going to be a car, car ramming. Life itself is, the, is a gift so precious that we are supposed to be on some level jumping for joy that we're alive. Your life is difficult? Well, even if it's difficult, and even if it comes with hardship, and even if you're suffering, it doesn't negate the fact that Hashem gave you the greatest gift that you can imagine, and more than you can imagine, to actually be part of His world and to be alive, to be thinking, to be breathing, to be living, to be moving. That is itself a gift. If someone is limping, he's going to curse the fact that he could walk because he's limping. He can walk. So what if he's limping? Okay, it's hard. You know, a crippled person, it's hard. I'm not, God forbid, we should all be healthy and strong and when Mashiach should come and there should be no people that are sick, suffering in hospitals with cancer, no people crippled, no people limping. We'll all be, God willing, perfect soon. But in the times that we live in now where there are, unfortunately, sad stories, tragic stories, how can we be happy? Because the life itself is something to be happy about. Whether it's a hard life or a good life, it's still a gift from Hashem. And since ultimately it's a gift from God who loves us, and cares for us, we have to say thank you for it. And how do we say thank you for it? For being happy. Hashem sees us and sees what we're feeling, sees how we're responding and reacting to His gift. And if we, did, and if we spite our life, if we hate the life we've been given, so that we're saying to Hashem, thank you, but no thank you. And that's not a way to react to Hashem for this gift of life. It's hard. We can speak about it. I'm not sure who, if we can all live these things, but, but, we, but we can try to, at least knowing is half the battle, knowing tells me, at least I know what the reality is. The reality is that the life I have is good. Why? Because that's what life is. Life is good. It's a priceless, precious gift, and every moment of it is a moment you want. You won't, don't ever want to give away. What it comes with is already a secondary discussion, because God wants to give us the perfect good, so therefore we have to earn it, and okay, yada, yada, yada. That's a secondary discussion, and that doesn't negate the, the initial foundation of it all, that this is a tremendous blessing and gift. Life is a blessing, and therefore we have to be the simcha. We have to be happy. It's hard. We're going through pain. Well, we can have two emotions in our heart at the same time. We can be happy and sad at the same time. It's discussed in the Zohar. One rabbi was giving a discourse, a Torah discourse, about the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash. And the, the discourse itself, the beauty of the, of the Torah discourse, made people happy. But the content and the subject was very sad because it was, it was about this destruction of the Bet HaMikdash. And so they experienced the feeling of happiness and sadness at the same time. Happiness with the beautiful insight and understanding that is unbelievable. The, the, the pleasure and experience of understanding Hashem's truth, understanding Hashem Himself, unbelievable. There's nothing more, that can make you more happy than that. 
But when it comes in the package of discussing and, uh, the idea of God's gvur, God's strictness, God's punishment, and, and how we suffered, so that of course hurts, that's sad. But they both can coexist. And that's what we learn about being besimcha in Adar and all year long. Yes, you could cry. Yes, it could hurt. But yes, you have to also be happy. And yes, you have to also smile inside. Because that's how you live life. That's how you embrace every moment of life. And life is a blessing. Okay? I want to ramble on and on about it. But what I do want to do is show you a bit of an insight and, 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 and really bring this whole idea home and support it more with the idea of what Simcha really is. So the truth is, I'm fortunate. I live with Simcha every day. I live with, with joy every day. I'm an unbel- it's an unbelievable gift I have, a gift that Hashem gave me, a daughter named Esther Simcha. <laughs> so, so I live with Simcha all day long, and believe me, sometimes it's painful. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Our conversations are beautiful and deep and sweet and sour sometimes and hard sometimes. But at the same time, I have that simcha all day, every day. This is my simcha. Bezrat Hashem. Till Mashiach comes. Amen. So we live with simcha, but we live with difficulty. That's the whole point. So what is the word simcha? So there's a pasuk that says that we must serve God be simcha with joy. The bet in this word is a prefix, but it doesn't matter. It's part of the actual word, and we can include it in the lesson uh, as far as gematria and deeper, deeper meanings go. Be simcha means, in Hebrew, the letters can spell out the word mach shava, thought. So the word be simcha in the pasuk to serve God with joy and happiness also means serve God with thought. So when we put together happiness and Thought together, that means our happiness and our joy isn't, isn't, isn't empty-headed. It isn't a dumb-dumber experience. It isn't going to a comedy movie because our life is not a comedy movie. Our life is, is real. Mm. And so the joy that we're looking to attain has to come with forethought. It has to come with using our brains. and has to come with true and real understanding, insight, enlightenment. Ignorance is bliss, but it's a lie. Machshava, thought, reality, enlightenment, knowing Knowing the truth, that brings true joy. And even if it's a hard story, knowing God's truth and God's plan for us and the world and how we're going to ultimately get to the revelation of all the good He wants to give us is also simcha. It's simcha right now. It's joy right now that I can understand that everything Hashem does for me is for the good. I can believe it and understand it. It's, that's instant joy. It's not, the, it's not the revelation of all of that joy, but it's a part of it. It's, 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 a, it's a taste of it because I can have it in my mind through machshava. So the key to reaching the joy and happiness in these difficult times is the mindset, is the faith and the mindset put together that brings Hashem with us. The difference between the word in, in Hebrew, we're going to change it to Hebrew in a minute, the difference between being lost and, and exiled, the difference between being in galut and geulah, being redeemed, is one letter, Aleph. And Aleph is Hashem. Aleph is the chief of the world. When you bring the Aleph, which is the first letter of the word Emuna, so when you bring the Aleph, which is faith in God, who is in charge, when you bring him into your world and into your life, then you're not in exile anymore. You're not far away. You're with Hashem. And if you're with Hashem, then life could not be any better. That's even with Hashem besimcha. Serve Hashem besimcha, because Hashem is here with us, with our struggles, and with our achievements, and with our happiness. And ultimately, all of this is just a prelude to the ultimate revelation and living with Hashem in the Bet HaMikdash and the perfect world that is going to, when we reach that point, we will see how everything was just the idea of making, making the world that, that, that we're going to be in later. So the process is hard, but the process is part of the destination. We said the journey and, and, and the destination are one when it comes to real life and Torah. So the journey that's hard will bring us to a true blessing and a, tr- and a true good. If the, if the journey wasn't part of the destination, then, then the destination would be fake. So in order to have the real, true simcha and the real happiness with Hashem, that has to come through this journey that we're on right now.